Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to be making three cards using some new products from the Pretty Pink Posh Easter and Spring release. It just released this March. And there's so many fun products in this release. And if you missed my video showing everything that is included in this release. I will link that here. I will also put a link in the description box below and you can go take a look and see the, everything that's included in the spring release. So this set is called Easter Signs. And this stamp set is so cute. There are some, There's a bunny, as you can see me coloring up here holding a sign and there are some stamps that you can actually stamp inside of the sign and you'll see those there off to the right. There's a Hoppy Easter, there is a You Are Special, and there is a Happy Spring. And those stamps can be stamped inside of the sign. There's also, you'll see me coloring up in just a little bit, there's a sheep holding a sign and then there's a little chick and an egg holding a sign. So there's three of the critters holding signs and then there's some other chicks in some Easter eggs, butterflies, there's some pinwheels, really, really cute stamp set. So for the bunny and for the sheep, I use the same colors. So I have C3 along the edges and then I come in with my C1 marker and then blend that out with the C0 and then finish the blending just by bringing in the colorless blender. I don't color the entire image, I uh, just really color the edges just to show a little bit of depth on the sheep and the bunny because I wanted them to look very light gray and have a white inside. And then for the face, I color R11 and R01 and then the cheeks are R20. And then for the chicks, I color Y08 along the edge, come in with Y04 and then I come in with the Y02 to finish up that blend. I do go over it a second time just to give a little bit more contrast. Just bring that dark in again and then fill it in with the lightest color. Now I will have a list of all of the colors that I use on all of these images down in the description box. I'll also have them listed in my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com. So if you want to duplicate any of these colors, you can take a look down in the description box or on my blog and take a look at that. I also want to mention that I did use my Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, which is the ink that I love to use when I color with alcohol markers. And the paper that I love to use is the Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Cardstock. So you have to make sure that when you're using alcohol markers that you are using the right uh, ink and the right paper so that you can get a good blend with your markers. So for my cards today, I am going to be making some scene cards. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love to make scene cards using several cute images from different stamp sets. And this one is no different because there are so many cute spring images and I decided I was gonna go ahead and make some really cute spring cards with these sets. So for this butterfly, I colored YR12 in the middle, and then I put my darkest teal BG57 on the inside wings, followed by BG53, and then just blended that out. I do come in with the dark one more time, just to add a little bit more contrast, and then I move on to the next butterfly and color with BV01 as my dark, and BV000 as my light. And then I move on to the pinwheel and color with RV14 and RV13. And there's two pinwheels, so I color them both the same. Speaking of pinwheels, Pretty Pink Posh has come out with a beautiful pinwheel die set. And I have a video coming up here on my YouTube channel showing how I put some really beautiful pinwheels together. And they're 3D pinwheels. You can actually use them for decor. And be sure to stay tuned for that. And there is a picture of that pinwheel also in my video showing all of the products, which I have linked down below. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to go ahead and color up the Easter wreath. I love this wreath. There are several different spring icons in this wreath. So there is a bunny, there's a chick, there are some Easter eggs, there are some flowers, carrots, 
jelly beans, butterflies, so many fun spring images. In addition to the wreath that you see me coloring up here, there are also some stamps, there are actual larger stamps of all of these same images. So if you need a little bit of a larger egg or a larger bunny or a larger butterfly, there are some larger stamps, which I'm gonna pop up on the screen right now so you can take a look at that. But you can see that they are some larger images and there are also matching dies that you can die cut them out. So if you wanted to use the larger ones on a card, which I'm gonna do today, you can do that. You can also, if you wanted to fussy cut any of these small images from the wreath, you can do that as well. There's a die to cut out the wreath as you see it, but not to cut out the smaller images. So you can definitely fussy cut those out and use those on your cards or projects. So I'm not gonna show all of the coloring for this wreath just because these images that you see me coloring up, I color the same way throughout the wreath. So here's the finished wreath. I went ahead and die cut it as well as all of the individual larger stamps as well as all of the stamps for the Easter signs stamp set. So next I'm going to stamp out some sentiments on the signs. I'm going to stamp out the sentiment you are special on the sheep and I'm also going to stamp out Hoppy Easter on the bunny. I don't actually use the chick in my card, so I just leave the sentiment off of that and just save the chick for another future project. So for my first card, it's gonna be a mini slimline size card. I'm using a scallop border die from Pretty Pink Posh, and I just die cut a piece of white cardstock. And after I die cut it, I'm just trimming out the border. And I also have a grass border from the Nature Essentials dies from Pretty Pink Posh. So I'm gonna use both of these borders on my cards, and I'm just gonna ink them up with some Distress ink. I'm inking up the larger scallop with Twisted Citron. Just using a blending tool and blending that out onto that border. If you did not have any inks to use, you can always die cut a border using colored cardstock. So you can use green color cardstock to represent the grassy hill that I'm trying to create. So here I'm taking some mowed lawn distress oxide ink and just putting that along the top of this border. So I just wanted to have two different color greens here just so that I can have a little bit more depth to my card. I think adding the multicolor it does add a little bit more depth and dimension to the card. Next I move on to the grassy border and I add some Twisted Citron ink to the grass. And I'm actually gonna be using two of the grassy borders so I ink up both of them. Next I'm gonna take a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. I cut it down to three and a half by six inches and I'm adding some tumbled glass Distress Oxide ink to that cardstock. Once again, if you don't have the inks, you can always take a piece of blue cardstock and just cut it down to three and a half by six to represent the sky on your scene. So I don't need to ink up the very bottom because I'm gonna have the grass down at the bottom, so I'm just gonna save my ink and leave that white. And then I'm gonna come in with my broken china ink and I'm just going to ink around the edges so that the sky has a little bit darker blue around the edges. So I have the lighter blue in the middle and the darker blue on the edges, and then I just blend that all together with the tumbled glass, which is my lighter blue. Next, I'm gonna spray all of these with some water, and then lift that water up with a paper towel. And what that does is it just pulls some of the ink away from the cardstock and just adds a little bit more depth to the card. Next, I'm going to add some acrylic paint to my mat. I add some water to the acrylic paint just to thin it out a little bit and mix that up with a paintbrush. And I'm going to flick some of that white paint onto my backgrounds, again, just to add a little bit more depth and dimension to the card. Next, I'm going to add some sparkle by using this sheer shimmer sparkle spritz and just spray that on the background and I will have to dry that background with a heat tool because I want to go ahead and start working with it if you're not ready to start working with it and you don't have a heat tool you can just set it aside and just uh, let that background dry before you start putting your card together so I added the scalloped border first. That's gonna just represent a hillside border. I did not glue the very top of it to the card because I'm gonna tuck some things behind. 
Next, I'm going to add a grassy border. Again, not putting glue at the very top of the grass because things will be tucked behind that. I do need two of these grass borders because I have a mini slimline size card. So you can see I'm just adding the second one there to finish up the grass. And that line that you see there, it will be covered up with some stamps. So I'm not worried about that. So here I'm going to go ahead and tuck my sheep into the grass right in the middle of the card. I am going to put a bunch in the on the right side I do color up the nose because I forgot to do that when I was coloring the stamp I thought it would be cute to have this little bunny peeking out of the grass so I'm gonna go ahead and stick that behind the grass on the card you can see I'm gonna cover up the line where the two grass borders connect with some stamps so I will be putting an egg and a carrot and what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of putting these stamps where I want them before I actually glue them down. Now I did glue down the sheep because I knew that that was going to go in the center of the card and then on the right and left side of that sheep I'm just tucking things in where I want them or where I think I'm going to want them just to lay out all of my stamps before I glue them down. So this is what I call the planning stages of building my scene. So once I have everything where I want it, I go ahead and start gluing everything down, just picking up all of those pieces, applying glue, and then adding them to the card front. So once all my stamped images are glued down, I go ahead and glue this card panel to a mini slimline card base that measures three and a half by six inches. And that's gonna complete my card. And I just love how this card turned out. I think it's super cute. So moving on, I'm gonna go with my wreath stamp set and I'm gonna create another scene card. So I have another grass border that I'm just inking up with some of that mowed lawn ink, just like I did with the previous card. I love using these border dies and using them for grass or for hillside borders or snowy borders if you're doing a winter card and then just adding ink to them just to add some dimension and depth to those borders. So this card is going to be an A2 size card and an A2 size card measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So I have a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that I cut down slightly smaller than an A2 card base. So this one is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I just am adding some tumbled glass ink all over the card front. And I'm going to add some of the broken china along the edges. So just like I did with the previous card, only it's a different size. So same process, just a different size card front. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more acrylic paint to my mat there, spray it with water, mix it up really well. And I'm going to go ahead and flick some of that paint onto the background. I did spray that background with water like I did with the previous card and lifted up some of that ink with a paper towel. So here I'm going to go ahead and flick some of this paint onto the sky background as well as to the grassy border and I'm going to spray on some of that sheer shimmer sparkle spray just to add some sparkle to that card front and I'm going to dry that with my heat tool. So here's an up close look at all of that sparkle and next I'm going to start putting this card together. So I first start by adding the grassy border at the bottom and then I just trim off the excess and then I will add the wreath to the top of the card. And for my sentiment, I want to add a sentiment inside of the wreath. So I pick the sentiment that says, Welcome Spring. This is from the Easter Signs stamp set, and it actually fit perfectly inside of this wreath. So I just placed it there in my Misty, lined it up, and then I stamped it out. So I thought it would be cute to have some of these chicks in the grass below the wreath and a butterfly in the sky, some flowers. So the chicks, remember, are from the Easter sign stamp set. And then the butterfly and the flowers, that's all from the Easter wreath. So I've combined a couple stamp sets with this card. So I go ahead and add the chicks down at the bottom. I do tuck them behind the grass like they're sitting in the grass. And then I add the flowers. I'm gonna add a butterfly there to the top. And then I'm gonna add this to an A2 size white card base. And that's gonna complete my card. I think this little scene is so cute. It's perfect for spring. So moving on for my last card, I'm going to use the Layered Eggs stencil. This is a three-piece stencil. 
and it allows you to create colorful Easter eggs using different color inks and it makes a pretty background for your card fronts. So I'm using the first part of the stencil. This is the egg shape and I'm just coloring that up with some squeeze lemonade ink. So all of my eggs are going to have the base color of yellow. If you wanted to do different colors in different rows, you can do that. Or if you wanted to have a rainbow look, you can do that. However you want to do it is up to you, but I decided just to make it easy and just do yellow for the base. Then I'm going to line up the next layer. This is the design of the eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that with my magnets. And this is the brand new Saltwater Taffy Distress Oxide Ink. I love this color. It's perfect for your spring cards. And I go ahead and ink up the eggs with the circle design. Those are all going to be in this Saltwater Taffy ink. Next I'm going to use the Wilted Violet, which is a purple ink, and I'm going to ink up all of the eggs that have that middle um, design, just as you see me inking up, so all of those will have purple. And then I'm going to move into the Peacock Feathers, which is a teal, and I'm going to ink up the rest of those. I see that I did forget to color one of the circle designs, so I come back in and ink that up with the Saltwater Taffy. And now when you remove the stencil, you can see your beautiful design you have for your card. So next I die cut a scallop circle die out of some white cardstock. That die comes in two pieces when you die cut it. It has the border and it also has the inside. So I'm inking up the inside with my tumbled glass distress oxide ink. I leave the border white and then I have the rest of this grass piece that I did not use in my first card and I'm adding it along the bottom of the inside piece of that scallop circle because I want to create a little scene inside of the circle. So I pop that piece back into the die and then I run it through my die cut machine because I want it to cut that grass piece the same scallop edge as the rest of the inside piece of that die. So you'll see here when I take it out of the die cut machine what that looks like. So it just cut the edges of the grass away and now I can fit that inside piece perfectly back in that scallop. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down the inside piece to that scallop circle and then I'm going to add the border right on top and it fits perfectly and then I'm going to go ahead and start building my scene. So your scenes on your cards don't have to be full scenes on a actual, you know, that take up the actual front of a card base. You can actually build little scenes inside of shapes just as I'm doing here. And I just go ahead and add that bunny from the Easter signs set and then I decide that I'm going to add a few of the Easter eggs and I'm also going to add a flower, tuck a flower back in there and I'm also going to do on the same opposite side and then I will go ahead and add that card front or that card layer to an actual A2 size card base. And that's going to complete that card. So I hope you liked my cards today, making three scene cards using some new products in the Pretty Pink Posh release. All product links will be linked down in the description box below. If you liked this video, please click that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe for more card making tutorials. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye bye.